This video is for week 16, lesson four. Okay, so before we even look at the notes sheet, um, I need to kind of give you a couple of tips that will make this lesson just so much easier. So previously, you have seen these three formulas before, right? These three, <laughs> one, two, three, are not new. Okay, but what might be kind of new um, is the fact that you can change those, meaning like you can manipulate the equation. So for example, for this first one, okay, the very first equation, let's say that I subtracted sine squared x from both sides. I would have one minus sine squared x, right? So that's a different version of one of the big kahunas. It's still equivalent, but this may actually kind of come in handy. Okay, likewise on this one, all right? And there are other options, okay? I'm just kind of giving you a demonstration here. Let's say I moved cotangent squared to the other side. That means that one is equal to cosecant squared of x minus cotangent squared of x, right? Or I could subtract one from both sides, right? There's, you can manipulate these, so just kind of keep that in mind. That's my number one hint, okay? The second hint is to write as much as you can in terms of sine and cosine. So if you see in one of these problems, let's say tangent of x, I suggest, highly recommend, to changing that into sine of x over the cosine of x. All right, so if you see two or three different trig functions, you're going to want to write them as something that is equivalent. Okay, so now that I've said those, we're going to do four of these problems together, okay? Just four, and, the, and I'd like you to write them on these notes. Um, and then you're going to do the rest of them, okay? So the first one that I'm going to do with you is number two. Okay. Our goal is to get this to either be a single trig function, right? So right now I see two different trig functions. This is not simplified or get it to be a number. All right. So I'm going to use my own advice, which is to change this one to be in terms of either sine or cosine, right? Because if I can get everything down to sines and cosines, we should be easy. It should be a lot easier. So I'm not changing the first trig function. I'm just gonna write it over one. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And if I multiply those two fractions together, I get the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. All right, and that is equivalent, right? You know the reciprocal identity. This is cotangent of theta. And now I have it down to a single trig function, and that's my answer. Okay, so again, I said I would do four of these. Let's move this thing up, and I think I'm gonna be doing number nine next. Okay, number nine, let me make that a little bigger. There we go. Okay, so for number nine, I see here that I've got one, two terms, Right, and these two terms have a cosine squared x in common. Cosine squared x, which means I can factor it out and I will still have two terms. When I take cosine squared out of itself, I'm left with one. And when I take cosine squared x out of this, I'm left with cotangent squared of x. Okay, now this, right here is one of those big kahunas that I was talking about earlier. It is cosecant squared. So cosine squared x times cosecant squared of x. <clears throat> and then, again, following my own advice, I am going to change anything that I can to be in terms of sines and cosines. So this first term I'm not changing. I'm just gonna put it over one. And then this is the reciprocal of sine squared. All right, so now when I multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, 
I have a single trig function. This will simplify to be cotangent squared of x. Okay, let's scoot this up a little bit. I'm going to do 11 next. 11. Okay, so I'm noticing right now that I've got secants and cosecants. I don't like that. Um, so if I have a secant squared in the denominator, that's equivalent to just cosine squared, right? You know the reciprocals. And cosecant squared is the res in, in the denominator, right? If I change that to its reciprocal, this is sine squared. And the last time I checked, this was the biggest of the big kahuna. <laughs> cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. Okay, so again, you'll know it's simplified when you have it all the way down to either a single number or a single trig function. Okay, so this last one, let's try number 12 together. All right, so 1 plus tangent squared in the numerator right here is one of the big kahunas. This is secant squared theta over cosecant squared theta. Okay, so just a reminder, you know the reciprocal identities. If it's secant squared in the numerator, that is totally equivalent to cosine squared in the denominator. Likewise, cosecant squared in the denominator is equivalent to sine squared theta in the numerator. And then this, by definition, I was going to put a box around it, but that's not the whole answer, so let me actually get rid of that box. There we go. Um, sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared theta. And that is a single trig function, and you're done.